Aloha and welcome. I'm Dr. Catherine Takeda Wong. Uh, I'm, what I'm about to share with you is information that you would rarely get a chance to hear from your conventional medical doctor and hard to find. And yes, there is a lot of information on the internet, but how much is reliable? And if you're not an expert, how will you know what to believe? When it comes to autism and ADHD, there are many limitations inherent in the conventional approach. So I'm gonna give you the inside scoop and take you behind the cartoon to explain what's really going on inside the body and how to treat medical issues with natural medicine. Today I'm going to explain several different special diets for autism and ADHD and discuss some of the symptoms that can be helped by each one. These are not diets to lose weight or anything like that. They are meant to be used to help with specific conditions. So thank you for joining me today. For those of you who are new to our events, I'm a naturopathic physician or ND. Like medical doctors, we attend a four-year medical school. We are trained as primary care physicians, uh, physicals, the same as any other doctor. Uh, but with naturopathic medicine, there is much more because we NDs are trained to place nutrition at the forefront of diagnosis and treatment. This is especially true when it comes to autism and ADHD. It amazes me, but to even today, fewer than 20% of our medical schools require any courses in nutrition. This is with conventional medical schools. Of those, the offerings are usually fewer than 25 hours in four years. Naturopathic doctors typically receive 100 hours of nutrition to build health from the inside. Applying that knowledge to a patient's condition, whether it's digestion or autism, takes a lot more time than prescribing a pill. Our office visits are a full hour. In addition, I'm also a licensed acupuncturist trained in Chinese medicine, which gives me another powerful natural medicine tool. Three pillars form the foundation of our practice. They are one, to heal, two, to educate, three, to empower. Today's event is a perfect example of those pillars. Okay, let's get started and please feel free to use the comment section to ask questions as the talk progresses. I will be answering questions as the talk goes along, and I'll also take some time to answer any questions that come up at the end. There are a number of special diets that can be helpful for autism or ADHD, including, but not limited to, the gluten-free and casein-free diet, the Feingold diet, the gut and psychology syndrome diet, the specific carbohydrate diet, low oxalate diet, and many others. Also, many children with autism or ADHD have food sensitivities or allergies. There's often significant improvement in those symptoms once the problem foods are eliminated. The right diet can make a difference in more than just digestive symptoms. That might include things like diarrhea, constipation, tummy pain, acid reflux, and so on. But I have treated a number of children with no digestive issues and have seen other symptoms improve with dietary changes, sometimes dramatically. These include problem behaviors like aggression, hyperactivity, self-injurious behavior, uh, such as banging or hitting their head or biting themselves. Uh, and stimming, as well as focus, attention, language, and overall cognitive function. Before talking with you about the specific special diets, there are certain foods that are typically problematic for these children. The first one is dairy foods, and that means more than cow's milk and the products made from it. It also includes milk from goat, sheep, and camels, and it encompasses products that are made from those animals, uh, from those animal milks like cheese, cream, cream sauces, yogurt, ice cream, and so on. It also includes ingredients in packaged and processed foods. There are different ways that children with autism or ADHD react to dairy, including allergies and sensitivities. 
For example, they may not have the enzymes that they need protein. Or they may make an antibody that attacks dairy foods. There can also be lactose intolerance. In addition, 75% of children with autism are making an antibody that attacks their brain. Consuming dairy products causes them to make more of it. So essentially consuming dairy products creates more antibodies that actually attacks their brain. The second most commonly problematic food for children with autism and ADHD is gluten, which is a protein that is found in wheat, rye, and barley. Reactions include allergies, sensitivities, and celiac disease. Now, as you're viewing this and want to talk with me, just call or text our office to schedule a free phone consultation with me. There's no charge because I don't take patients without talking to them first. I always want to make sure that what I do will fit your needs. You'll find all the contact information on our Facebook page, and you can also click on the link in the post. I also invite you to visit our website at drtaketawong.com. That's drtaketawong.com. The gluten-free and casein-free diet removes both gluten and dairy from the child's diet. I've seen this approach be very successful in helping many children to improve autism symptoms, I would say in a majority of children with autism. I've seen children with severe tantrums and aggressive or self-injurious behavior, such as melt towards themselves or others, improve. Self-injurious behavior, that includes hitting or biting themselves. I have seen improvements with attention and focus, impulsivity, hyperactivity. I've also seen a number of children with autism where after they take out gluten, they're more aware of what's going on around them and they start interacting more. Uh, also, I've seen improvements with language as well with many children with autism. And I've heard many parents tell me that after we started the diet, my, st my child started talking more or started responding more or being more aware and before it seemed like they were kind of just in their own world, but then after taking gluten and dairy out of the diet, it's like they, be, it's like they, parents have said it's like his brain, and he started being more aware and responding more, and also tend everything else out. And so I have seen that when we've taken gluten and dairy out of the diet, that many children with ADHD will be able to focus and attend better. And I've also seen, as I mentioned earlier, some improvements in attention, focus, impulsivity, or hyperactivity. Now, while this diet is very effective, it can also be hard to implement since gluten is in so many foods. Now, this is especially important. It is typically easiest for most children to start by finding substitutes that they will eat before making changes. So once, find, once parents find what their kids will accept, then they can start taking out the problematic foods. It's a process, not an overnight change. The mantra that generally is most effective for most children is to go slowly and don't try to force things on the child. Children with autism or ADHD may not be capable of changing at the same rate that a neurotypical child can. Moving on to the Feingold diet. This diet has two parts. One part is eliminating artificial food colors, dyes, flavors, sweeteners, and preservatives. I found this to be beneficial with many children with autism and ADHD. The biggest culprit on this list is artificial food dyes. I have seen many children where they become more hyperactive and impulsive with these food dyes in their diet than when they don't have it in their diet. They also have more difficulty with attention and focus. I have also seen that when they remove food dyes as well as these artificial additives, the artificial flavors, sweeteners, preservatives, we have sometimes seen improvements in meltdowns, tantrums, even aggressive. I strongly recommend eliminating artificial food dyes, 
flavors, sweeteners uh, from all children's diets and to avoid artificial preservatives as much as possible because many of these compounds can be problematic for many of our children even if they don't have autism or ADHD and they don't have any beneficial effects. Part two of the fine gold diet is eliminating foods that are high in salicylates, such as apples online. I'm not gonna go through all of those foods, uh, but in addition to the other symptoms that I had mentioned earlier, where I've seen improvements, I've also seen obsessive and compulsive behaviors in children, uh, particularly children with autism that have improved with avoiding apples and grapes. Most children that I see don't need to avoid all high salicylate foods. So we usually do a trial for them, taking out certain foods and then seeing if there is an improvement. Next we have the specific carbohydrate diet and the GAPS diet. GAPS stands for Gut and Psychology Syndrome. For children, particularly who have a lot of digestive problems such as gas, bloating, abdominal pain, loose stool, that are not improving with other approaches, I will often consider these diets. Both of these diets remove all grains, including whole grains and flour products. They also remove most sugars and starches. The biggest difference between the specific carbohydrate diet and the GAPS diet is that GAPS focuses on adding fermented foods and broths, like vegetable broths and bone broths. These are very difficult diets and they are not meant to be maintained long term. They're used to heal the gut and once that has been accomplished, other foods can be gradually reintroduced. Another special diet is the low oxalate diet. Oxalates are a chemical compound found in certain foods, and this is a naturally occurring compound. It is not an artificial compound. Examples of high oxalate foods include things like chocolate, almonds, peanuts, cashews, spinach, kale, and beets. There's many other foods, but these are some of the highest oxalate foods. The time I think about this diet is if in children or adults for that matter, are in pain and we can't find another cause. If oxalates build up in the body, they can form into crystals which can lodge in different parts of the body and cause pain. What kind of pain? This can be anything from headaches to abdominal pain to joint and muscle pain. I typically use this for children with autism who are in pain and there's no explanation for it and they're not getting better with what we're already trying or if they have aggressive and self-injurious behavior where again we cannot find out what the cause is and it's not getting better with what we're trying. Children with aggressive and self-injurious behavior with autism may have these behaviors because they're in pain and they can't communicate about it. All in all, I trust our discussion about special diets for autism and ADHD has been valuable for you. These diets can be very helpful, but it is important to have a practitioner that is trained in these special diets to know which diets are right for your child and which diets are going to be most helpful. If your, diet, if your doctor doesn't have the time to educate you like we're doing here today, you're welcome to talk with me personally about any health concerns that you may have so that you too can feel empowered with your health. To do so, just call or text our office to schedule a free phone consultation with me. There's no charge because neither I nor my associate, Dr. Anderson, take patients without talking to them first. We always want to make sure that what we do will fit your needs. You'll find all the contact information on our Facebook page and a link to our online supplement store in the post with this video. I also invite you to visit our website at drtaketawong.com. That's drtaketawong.com. Mahalo, and I look forward to being with you again in two weeks. Aloha.